Craig Ehrenberg from Odd Chopper here to break down all of the best MLB bets from Tuesday. While you come in, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment below to let me know whatever it is that you guys are betting today or just any general comments you have about the baseball slate. Do you like my bets? Do you hate them? Any other opinions? Always welcome. I read all of them and like to interact with you guys. A uh, quick recap of yesterday's slate, and it was an annoying one because I had three bets on yesterday's games. Uh, the one that won was the one that actually played out the way I thought that it should have. Well, obviously, I'm going to be a little bit biased because it ended up winning, but I did have over two and a half runs in the first five innings for the Atlanta Braves. They ended up putting up a whole bunch of runs. I was in between whether I wanted to bet over two and a half runs in the first five innings or over five and a half for the entire game. Ultimately, went with the over two and a half for the first five innings, and it wouldn't matter because both of them ended up winning. They had three runs in the first five innings, ended up scoring eight runs overall, eight nothing win for the Braves. But the other two bets I had yesterday, here's where they were annoying. There was no real significant weather in the forecast for either the Pirates game or the Red Sox Orioles game. And instead, what happened is there was lengthy rain delays in both of them. I had over on strikeouts props in both those games. Roundsy Contreras over four and a half strikeouts. Connor Seabold over three and a half strikeouts. Both those pitchers ended up getting stuck in the rain delay and just didn't return after the game resumed. So it's it's one of those situations like there, there was no real concerning weather in the forecast they were bets that look good in our projections and i thought there were sensible reasoning for them and then it just didn't really work out because of something i didn't see happening so it just happens sometimes when it comes to betting and uh hopefully no such bad luck today but we're about to break it down these are the best mlb bets for the tuesday slate first bet of the day i'm looking at here is over four and a half strikeouts for logan webb and this is a plus money bet we've got it at plus 120 now which is really really favorable odds when you consider that logan webb is having an outstanding season and he has a great matchup today against the colorado rockies one of the worst teams in baseball against right hand pitching and then also when it comes to the rockies when they're on the road considerably worse than when they're at home at chorus field something else to note about this bet plus 120 at bet mgm Compared to some other books, minus 122 is the over four and a half over on FanDuel. DraftKings is at plus 105. So another one of those spots. Talk about odd shopping here. Make sure you're getting the plus 120 line, not the minus 122 or plus 105, because that's just a clear indication of value. If something is plus 120 at one book, minus 122 at another book, make sure you're getting the plus 120. And if you're signing up BetMGM for the first time, there's a link below. You click on it when you place your first bet at BetMGM, risk-free of up to $1,000. But... Talking about Logan Webb here, 2.93 RA, 3.61 expected RA, 3.1 FIP, really having a solid year. And that's even despite a little bit of a slow start. Strikeout rate this year, north of 20%. He's not the highest strikeout pitcher in the world, but this is a really low strikeout prop, four and a half. And like I said, we're getting plus money on the over. And if I rely on our projections, looking at those, we have Logan Webb projected for 5.6 strikeouts today. The over projected to win 66% of the time really really good odds on a plus money bet and then we just look at some of the recent starts for logan webb also pretty consistently hitting the over on his strikeout prop so i'm so confused why this number is so low last time out was another start against the rockies and that was in coors field as opposed to being in san francisco five strikeouts for logan webb that start that would have been good for the over start before that he did struggle against the dodgers only a two strikeouts but before that six strikeouts six strikeouts seven strikeouts six strikeouts so overall, he has had five or more strikeouts in five of his last six starts. He has an easy matchup today. He's at home in a pitcher-friendly park. Give me the over four and a half strikeouts for Logan Webb, and we're getting such good plus money on a low number. The next prop I'm looking at is under seven and a half strikeouts for Hunter Green, and I love Hunter Green. He has a great matchup today against the Pirates as well. But this is a really big strikeout prop over under seven and a half. And as good as Hunter Green has looked lately, it's hard to buy into him a guy that's going to have eight or more strikeouts regularly. We have him projected for 6.8 right now at Odd Shopper, which, by the way, that's kind of where I think this line should be. I think it should be a six and a half strikeout prop, which is juice towards the over. And then I think the line would be totally fair. But seven and a half is just a big number to expect Hunter Green to get to. He's made 22 starts this year. He's at eight or more strikeouts in seven of the 22. So, 15 out of 22, we've seen the under hit. And, you know, when it comes to Hunter Green, he has great stuff. He generates a lot of strikeouts, but he has also been inconsistent this year, which I think is to be expected with a young pitcher in his rookie season, 23 years old. Clearly terrific stuff. Average fastball velocity, 99 miles per hour. You guys watch him pitch. He's hitting 103 at times, but that also comes with walk concerns at times. And there are also times where even when he generates strikeouts, it takes him a lot of pitches to finish off individual hitters. So it doesn't work super deep into games. We'll look at some of the game logs here for Hunter Green. 
And the last time that we saw him go seven plus innings was June 6th against the Cincinnati Reds. He's gone past six innings twice this entire season. So when you consider as good as his strikeout stuff is, it's just hard for him to get to eight, nine, 10 strikeouts with regularity when he's generally pitching five or six innings. And it's also at the end of the year. The Reds have nothing to play for because they suck. They've been terrible all year. One of the worst teams in baseball. So as a result, we see this all the time with young pitchers. Bad teams, they just don't really want to stretch out their pitchers to throw as many innings as possible because you want to save them for future seasons. That's why I think it's unlikely that we would see really deep innings from Hunter Green at this point in the season. So far, he's thrown 113 innings. That's a career high for him. And he's also gotten hurt at one point this year. I think the Reds will be a little cautious with him down the stretch of the season. And it's kind of something we've already seen a little bit lately. Overall, the numbers for Hunter Green, they are not quite as good as his strikeout numbers look like. He is somebody who's prone to giving up runs. So he's a 4.91 ERA, a 4.64 FIP. I love Hunter Green. I think he's a future ace. But at least for today, I'm back in the under seven and a half strikeouts. For my final bet of the day, I'm, I'm back in the Angels here. Minus one and a half. We're getting plus money on them. And I just really like the pitching matchup in favor of the Angels, especially when you consider that we've got James Caprillion on the mound for Oakland and the game is being played in Los Angeles. Caprillion stinks. And I also have a little bit of a bias here because about a month ago, I did win $50,000 in DFS by stacking the Yankees against James Caprillion. So any chance I get where I think it's a reasonable opportunity to bet against Caprillion, I'm probably going to do it because it's something I've won money with in the past. Caprillion this year, 4.43 array, 4.94 FIP, and he doesn't generate swing and misses which is generally the way you beat this Angels team, right? They have a lot of strikeouts to be had in the lineup, particularly guys like Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. So if you have a pitcher that's able to generate some swing and misses, they could navigate through this Angels lineup. But when it's a pitcher like Caprillion, who just doesn't generate strikeouts against any major league hitters, only a 16.3% K rate this year and a 10.6% walk rate, it's dangerous to go up against the Angels team and some of those power hitters like Trout and Otani when they're going to be putting the bat on the ball. And We've seen that at other times this year where there's been what seemed like easy matchups on paper for Caprillion, where he's pitched against the Tigers, for instance, with a six and a half strikeout prop, and he ended up finishing with one strikeout in that start. So even really easy matchups, we've seen Caprillion struggle, whereas on the other side of the mound, Patrick Sandoval is having a quietly really good year for the Angels, and it gets lost because this is a team that has been massively underwhelming this year. And basically, whenever we're talking about this team, the focus goes on Trout and Otani. But Sandoval, great matchup against the A's, one of the worst offense in baseball. And Sandoval, 3.01 ERA, 3.18 FIP this year. His strikeout rate, really solid at 23.9%. Walk rate, sub 10%. And look at some of the recent results that we've seen from Sandoval as well. He's allowed two or less earned runs in every single start since July 23rd. So the recent starts that we've seen from Sandoval... Two earned runs, two earned runs, one, two, one, zero, two, zero, two. Is a guy who's just really hard to put runs up against. And James Caprillion does nothing but allow runs. This is a guy who very rarely has great starts. In fact, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, he had a start where he gave up eight earned runs. That's more than that, that's more than we've seen in the last two months combined for Patrick Sandoval. So I think this is a really strong pitching matchup in favor of the Los Angeles Angels. They're at home. They also are going to be having the better offense in the spot. I think the Angels offense, more talented than the A's offense. So all those things considered, I'm back in the Angels minus one and a half. We're getting them at plus money. So recapping the Tuesday bets here, we have Logan Webb over four and a half strikeouts, Hunter Green under seven and a half strikeouts. And finally, Los Angeles Angels minus one and a half on the run line. That's what I got lined up for today. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section, anything that you guys are betting on for tonight's slate. Before you leave, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Good luck. I'll see you guys again tomorrow.